we're in Casey County. I love Casey County. Some of the friendliest people I've ever met are in Casey County. I'm not kidding you. This is Todd Harn. Now, we're out here today on your beautiful farm. Good time of year. It's gorgeous. Good time of year. You know, we're out here for a reason today. First of all, we've been talking on the phone. We finally met. I wanted a cow. Mm -hmm. I talked to Donald Tarter. Donald's getting it started. He's kind of letting me know, okay, he came and looked at my property and said, you need to do this, you need to do that. He said, I'm going to find you somebody that's got a cow. That's the next step. Now, there's a lot involved in here. You don't just say, hey, I want a cow, and you put it in the yard and let it rip. Right. There's a lot to it. And I'm going to ask you questions about that today, and we're going to follow up later at the house. But the reason we're here today is because we're going to visit the cow and the calf that mm -hmm. I'm about to purchase. We're going to bring back up on my place. First of all, let's talk about the fact that you're doing something unique here. This isn't your typical, this is your creation right. for the most part. Tell right. us about what you're trying to do with the black ang Angus and, and the, the old milk cow over there. Sure. All right, in 2011, Tim, I liquidated my cow herd, had 34 black Angus cows, took a um, little extra money I had out of that and bought bi five brown Swiss cows. Now, why brown Swiss? Okay. One, brown Swiss was cheaper mm -hmm. because they were a dairy breed. Number two, I was using them as nurse cows. So I was putting multiple calves on each cow. I would go to the stockyard, local stockyard over in Camelsville, and purchase calves that were pulled off of maybe some old cows or what they call downer cows, cows that's on their last leg. And I would buy that baby calf and graft it onto that cow. So that first year of having five brown Swiss nurse cows, I was able to raise probably somewhere between 25 and 30 calves that year because I would keep the calves on for three months, take those calves off, put a new group of calves on. I would get three rotations oh, wow. per milk cycle. It's how I started my base herd. So I took the brown Swiss cows, crossed them with a black Angus bull, and started from there, basically working towards an animal that's got plenty of frame, plenty of milk, very docile. And I'm taking that, now my goal is, is just to get the meat added back to that frame. It's working so far, I'm enjoying it, having a good time doing a lot of artificial insemination on these cows. I do that myself and um, have enjoyed it, so it's kind of neat. Being that I have sheep, Mm -hmm. And there'll be some times when I'll probably introduce those together and let those roam around. Now, sheep really graze sure. things down, so I've got different areas where I can move everybody around. Um, but what Donald recommended for what I'm going to do is a, do a more docile animal. Mm -hmm. And with that, with what you have here, you know, I've already touched her on the nose. Right. You know, you have to get to know your cattle. Sure. They have to be careful with you and all that. Sure. But I want something that I can move around, not have to worry about running me in the ground. Right. This to me is, and I've talked to a lot of people who are, who are talking about your, your, your milk cow there mm -hmm. who say that's their favorite cow to eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Sure. Okay. I've got a jersey up here that I'm fattening. Gotcha. And I'll tell you why, Tim. I could buy probably three jerseys for what one of these black calves is going to sell for at the stockyard. I can go and buy the jersey breed. Yes, they're not going to have quite as much meat that you're gonna get as far as the way they're gonna cut out. They're not gonna cut out quite as much, but the quality and the taste is just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's better than Angus to me as far as taste, and I, I almost hate for that to be on camera, <laughs> but it is the truth because uh, there's probably some Angus people right now that, uh, that might have clicked the station off, but I, I've been fattening a Jersey calf every year and uh, grain fed. I'm not a grass fed person. Um, I like the flavor that the grain brings to the, to the meat. Yes, the grass fed is more like eating deer. Um, it's, it's probably healthier, but I just soon die a year or two early eating something I enjoy. Can you do a combination of that? Can you give them some, you know, let them eat grass and then give probably, them some? Probably can, yeah. yes. And I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing like a feedlot would. I'm not pushing, um, but he'll have pretty much all the, all the grain he wants, just ground ear corn and some distiller's grain, right. something like that, good mineral. Um, you say she's trained one wire, so I can mm -hmm. probably put a very minimal. Sure expense yes in that fence yes now i've got to get me a good unit where i can mm -hmm. you know keep her in and you say she needs a pretty good zap yes so she's like is that thing on or off right you don't want her you don't want her go in there right i don't want yeah i wouldn't want her she's been running uh, this field you can see in the background along the fence along the wood line there is one strand of electric wire that i just put an electric box on because of those calves right. the cows stayed in the calves are wanting to get out so I just bought a solar powered unit from Southern States and right. put on there two or three weeks ago just to keep the calves in. 
how long is it going to take this little guy? You said you said at any point you can eat this sure. animal, but ideally, if I'm wanting to really put a bunch of meat in the freezer for the mm -hmm. winter, when do you think would be an ideal time, and what should I shoot for weight-wise to get him up to before I eat him? I think you need to. I think you need to kind of target around 600 pounds, at least get to 600. Right. One, the cow will have no problem supporting that animal, supporting that calf to get it to 600 pounds, milking as much as she's going to. There'll be no problem there. In that six 650 range, if you want to pull it off and just and finish it a little bit on feed, you could do that. But we, as as uh, kids, we used to kill a milk-fed calf right off the cow every year, and you can't beat the taste, and it'll be tender enough to cut it with a fork. Now me, mm -hmm. hobby farmer, I want to raise one a year for me. Okay. All right. What do I need to think about to take care of that that cow? What do I need to look out for? What kind of shots do we need? Mm -hmm. What does what does what are some things that we're really going to have to watch out for? You'll have different opinions about this. My my brood cows, um, I usually just give them an IBR shot, which is a respiratory virus inoculation to keep them from getting some respiratory issues, and then I use a dewormer. That's all they need. Um, you can change ear tags if you need, you know, if ear tag comes out, you can put a new ear tag in, but it's, as far as anything additional, nothing needed there. For the calf, black leg, an IBR shot, I'll take care of the castrating him before he comes to you. Thank you very much. Yes, and deworming him maybe a couple times, okay? The worms are just going to rob him from his growing capabilities. Right. Um, anything, anytime there's How worms. How often in. will I have to do that once, once it's taken care of here? at about maybe 300 pounds or so, and then maybe again at maybe 500 pounds, and they actually make some that you can just add to feed. Oh, good. So no shot needed on Very that. Good. So that'd be no problem for you there. One of the one of your one of your biggest concerns is going to be getting this cow bred back here in a couple months. Explain that to those who might not. Okay. You want your cow to calve basically every year. So sometime around April next year, you want you want another calf on the ground because you're gonna eat this other one up right. and need another one. So that's what you need to focus on here. Um, sometime in June, we need to be looking at getting a bull, getting to introduce that cow to. So you can do one of two things, take the cow and calf to the bull, or bring a bull, put it in there with the cow and calf. Leave it in there for 45 days, heat cycle on that cow, uh, 21 days. Every 21 days they're gonna come and heat. That bull will pull that cow in heat. It's a natural thing. That'll be your next biggest challenge is getting her bred back gotcha. um, and get ready for next year's calf. Let's take a walk and look at some heritage. Sure. Yeah. Woo, so come on. When called correctly, they cannot resist it. They're going to come running. <laughs> look at them. Yeah. Come on, girls. Yeah, come in here. So here's one of my foundation cows, okay, 901. That means she was born in 2009. The other brown Swiss coming up back there, That she's got that red t calf there. That, that is one, that's a twin. Her other twin calf is in the, in the lot. I went ahead and pulled one calf off. Now that calf will get all the milk. The other one will, will be on eating feed. It's just amazing how, yeah. you, how you can take something and just custom fit to what that's you right, want. you can. Does it aggravate you that the process takes breeding cycles together? Yes, like, yeah. which takes, you a year. It. takes a year. <laughs> you're, you're, it don't matter, and no matter how well you like it, you can get a dud. This whole thing is so fascinating. Yeah. You know, there's uh, there's going to be a little bit of a break here. I have I have to do this terrible. I got to go to Southern Florida and fish. I hate that for you. It's really terrible. Do. The things I have to do with this show just make me mad sometimes, Todd. But I've got to get through that. Once I struggle through that process, we do a little seafood cooking and a little stuff like that. It's terrible. We're going to come back, and then we're you're coming up to the house. Right. I can't wait to actually have. You know, like I said, I'm not going to be a big operation. Sure. But I would like to get to the point eventually where I can milk a cow too. Right. You know, and then have some milk for us too. Yes. The whole thing's yep. just fascinating. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Not a problem. Not see, a problem. I see where you're going with this. Yep. Very interesting. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Families enjoyed it. There's nothing like walking out here and seeing something that basically you've you've created. On your place. Yeah, on my place. That's, That's right. Cool. That's right.